Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Dan Cordelicchio. I want to welcome you to the Destination Health Podcast. I want to thank everybody listening today. Our podcast has grown very nicely. We have a lot of listeners. We like to motivate, we like to educate, and we like to inspire, as we say. And it's all about our guests. And our guests are the ones that are bringing everybody over. And today is no exception. We have Bodybuilder. We have a great guy. We've had some great conversations off record, right? And Christian Palmer, thank you for coming on to Destination Health Podcast. We're very excited to have you on. Dr. Dan, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. You know what? We discuss, we talk, and if we don't get through everything, we're going to have Christian back on because, you know, our guests, we really get into it and we, and, we, and we really go for it. So a little bit about Christian. Specializes in helping men regain their vigor. It's very important because it's all about the ladies. What about us guys? Ignite their confidence and achieve their fitness goals through conquering nutrition. I love that. Athlete as a child, uh, earning his black belt in Okinawan Goju Ryu, right? Is that the way you say it? Yes. <laughs> what? What degree do you have, Christian? So I've got a second degree black belt. All right. I got a first degree in, 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 TK, in TKD and, and so does my son. Oh, nice. Okay. Played football and ran track, uh, track and field in high school. Uh, passion for fitness when he began. He picked up his dumbbell in high school when he was 14, first when he was 14 years old. It went from there. Passion for nutrition started in his late teens. Mom diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Happens a lot. Determined to learn more about nutrition in order to help those lose weight, especially your mom, and improve her health. All of that knowledge from the tr from 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 the reading and and being a bodybuilder, you ready to help your mom conquer those diabetes and come off of her insulin? I love that. She lost over sixty pounds, and now she's sixty eight years old. You said, "Listen, if I can help my mom, I want to help other people, right?" And that's a great thing. And now you're working with men over 40 years old. And I think that's great because it's all about the ladies over 40 years old. Let's talk about men over yes. 40 years old here, here. So bodybuilding, how'd you get into bodybuilding? Cause that's going to be the first question that everybody wants to know. Okay. So, uh, at 14, I was searching the internet. I, I think I was looking for something nutrition based. I just sort of got my feet wet in it. I came across a picture of a bodybuilder, IFBB pro named Garrett Downing. Mm -hmm. Telling you that second when I saw that picture, I stopped and I was like, I want to look just like that. I must have printed out a stack of papers as big as a Webster's Dictionary on nutrition, exercise, how to do this, mindset, lifestyle. And then it right. just skyrocketed from there. You just, you just took off from there. That's, that's, that's when you, you, know, you, you knew that you wanted to get moving and, and do this. You know what? And, you know, growing up. You know, you look at Mr. Olympia, you looked at Charles Atlas, that's how old I am. And, and you want it to be that way. But my path took a little bit different, you know, playing football. So now tell me, men, testosterone, low T happens a lot with men. Let's talk about some interventions. How do you help men out? So the first thing that I have men look at is their lifestyle. So one of the issues that I see very, very common these days is that there's, we are bombarded by advertisements in the media. I've got the one food to boost your testosterone by 50%, right? Or here's the one thing and the magic bullet, right? And the reality is a lot of these men are looking to testosterone replacement therapy, testosterone mm -hmm. boosters over the counter at GNC, and mm -hmm. the guy who works behind the counter is going to tell you it's the greatest thing, even though he's never used it. Right. And a lot of these men don't look at basic things, sleep, nutrition, exercise, and just daily habits. What time you get up, what time you go into sleep, right? What's your mindset? Like, are you in a positive mindset? Are you doing things in life that you enjoy that elicits the release of dopamine and norepinephrine and makes you feel good about yourself? And, mm -hmm. um, that's the first thing I'll go to is when I have a new client come in, mm -hmm. I might say, I think I have low T I'm just, I'm not feeling my, my, my normal self. I'm hyped up on coffee just to feel normal throughout the day. Right. And the first question is like, okay, you know, what's, how many hours of sleep are you getting on the average night? And in my experience, the most common answer is between five and six and a half hours. Right. Now, so many men will say, oh yeah, but I'm fine. You know how men are. We suffer in silence, right? So it's all. Well, well, well we want to be tough, right? I mean, let's face it. I mean, you know, we don't want to say, hey, listen, we need more than six hours. We're tough. We can handle this. Yes. 
And it's like, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll just grum through it. And right. then they get up in the morning, not feeling well rested. Then they have to drink their entire pot of coffee to feel somewhat normal until they get to lunch and they need that two o'clock pick me up. And I'll say, okay, let's start off, you know, if, if we're going to go down the sleep route first, let's start off with baby steps. I think a lot of people, men specifically, will come into that scenario and say, oh, well, you know, I just, I can't get eight hours. I can't do it. I'm like, okay, cool. If we're at five hours now, let's go to five hours and 15 minutes. Do you think that's right. doable? They're like, okay, yeah, you know, a sure. week goes by five hours, 15, then we go to five hours and 30. So it's all about baby steps because huge changes are very, very hard for people to make. So it's like, how do we get you there in a step-by-step -step process that's sustainable? And then once we get to you to a, play, a point of sleep between seven hours, you know, in general, that tends to work uh, um, for, for many men. Then right. we can start focusing on the other factors, you know, and of course, nutrition is a huge one. Right. And we're going to get into that. And I think that what you said is extremely important. It's a step-by-step -step changing, making making lifestyle changes, you know, and it's a step-by-step -step process. Sometimes you get a patient in, you get a client in, you know, they're the type two diabetic. They have the metabolic syndrome, as we were saying. And the doctor said, hey, listen, you may have a heart attack. You may have to go, you know, you may have to accelerate it a little bit. But if you can go step by step and make those goals obtainable, that's really good. Now, let's go back. I have a bunch of notes that I, that I already wrote. So-called world-renowned experts. Oh, that bothers me, Christian, right? I mean, everybody is a world. I mean, I, I read, I have, I have patients, I have individuals in nutrition sending me stuff you know, oh, I'm going to give you a uh, PhD level education. And I don't even, I, you know, I've never done that before. Or, you know, the scams, let's talk about the scams and how to recognize them and how to stay away from those. Because like you said, you can go into one of these popular stores, you have an 18 year old that's never done any of this stuff. Next thing you know, you're walking out with $500 worth of product. And you're like, why am I taking bee pollen? Yeah. You know, why, 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 why am I taking bee polymer? Why am I taking raspberry ketones or something like that? Right. So let's talk about the scams. What do we have to watch out for there? My rule of thumb is if it sounds too good to be true. It probably is. Right. You know, because there's so much money to be made in supplements and business, everyone's looking for the magic pill. And that started, right. you know, years ago with the slim fast and the, Hey, just, right. just follow this and, and drink juice for a month. And you'll, you know, live the rest of your life uh, um, feeling great. And you'll lose 30 pounds in 30 days. Right. And so now we've been trained that there's gotta be some magic bullet. It's got right. it can't be to sleep. It can't be just eat healthy. Come on, give me, give me the bottle of pills. Right. And the problem is that, when you go into a store and you ask someone behind the counter, the first thing is you have no idea their credentials. And like you said, it's probably an 18 year old kid. What does he know about being a man over 40 with low T and right. low figure? Like nothing. Right. Or you'll have the guy in the gym. Yeah, man, you know, I did this. Just try this. This has worked for me. And while your buddy might be over 40, just because something worked for one man doesn't mean it's going to work for the other. And I think that's important to mention because there's a lot of studies going on with epigenetics and nutrigenomics because everybody's got a different metabolism, right? Right, Christian? I mean, everybody, and you have to, and you have to find that in order to help somebody out because, you know, I have, I have patients coming in. I don't want to spend any more money. I've spent $5,000, $2,000. I went to the store and I'm like, whoa, whoa, we're much different, right? You, you and I are much different when they come to see us, you know, knowledge, skill, training, education, experience, you know, as opposed to just going in and, and purchasing a product, bee pollen, and my tea is going to increase at that point, man. And I think, you know, one of the things that I wish there were more doctors out there like you and practitioners who would teach about, the reality is it's, a lot of it's based in our own personal responsibility, right? Right. You look to an external source, all you can do is yield to that, right? Versus, okay, what are my daily habits what are the things right. that I can do to be better myself? Because if that pill doesn't work, then where have you gotten? Versus, okay, I've gotten to sleep. Okay, that's under wraps. In some way, shape, or form, that's going to help something in your body. Right. Whether it's recover from workouts better, improve your digestion, increase your tea, increase your mood, whatever it is, then you move on right. to nutrition. There's no health professional that I can think of that would tell me, 
well, yeah, don't worry about the nutrition chat. Just take the pills. If you improve your nutrition, something about your physiology is going to get better. It's going to improve. And I think that's very important. And that's a very important point to make. Improving your nutrition will help your metabolism and your physiology and your uh, biochemistry. And, and I will tell you that a lot of doctors right now are looking at sleep. And I did a podcast with a um, former Navy SEAL, retired Special Forces, Dr. Kirk Parsley. Great guy. All right. We're actually going to do a little study on my son because he has a product for children to get them to sleep because sleep is so important. You know, without sleep, your, your, you know, your body systems are not going to work properly. Right. You know, your biochemistry is not going to work properly. I mean, you know, kids should be getting 10 to 12 hours. And again, sometimes it's tough for an adult to get seven to eight hours. Mm -hmm. Speak a little bit more about sleep because I think it's important. So, the first thing I'll say is I tell people that the more things you can do to keep you like a child, the healthier you're generally going to be. And what do I mean by that? I love that. As we, as we age, we take on more responsibilities. So we spend less time exercising, <laughs> laughing, and just doing things that evoke creativity and just having fun. How many guys over 40 you see that are just like grizzled old men that are just grunting and mad at life? Right. Listen, you got to get outside and enjoy yourself. And when it comes to sleep, when we're babies, obviously they're in their developmental stages, but mm -hmm. we sleep all the time. And then when we're in our adolescence, we sleep a lot. It's only once we, after we go to school mm -hmm. and uh, we get jobs that we got to be up early, we got to get the family ready for, for school or whatever it might be. So the easiest thing to cut off is sleep because you're not getting paid for it. No mm -hmm. one's looking over your shoulder to make sure you get it. Right. And, you know, it goes from, okay, eight hours back in the day. Now it's seven and a half. Now it's six. Now it's whatever I can get. Right. And our body changes, and we also include things like uh, caffeine and, and, and stimulants to keep ourselves up. But I've seen in research studies where men that get five and a half hours of sleep or less for several days have shown a drop to 10 to 15 percent of testosterone. Wow, that's significant. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, you've got the fatigue from not sleeping. Now right. your fee is low, and then you want to go either work out or try to, you know, just do your daily tasks. And you're like, no wonder you feel like a zombie. And you can't perform any of that stuff because your T is so low. That's crazy. So, so you, you, you know, you're, you're hitting on all the points that I talk about with all my patients coming in. You're saying two to three, two o'clock, you need a pick me up anywhere between two to three. It's that coffee. It's that, it's that sugary, you know, you know, pastry, that you need to boost yourself. You know, that I call that the bewitching hour. Your adrenals are shot at that particular point. Your T is going down because you're just not fueling your body correctly. I did that to myself, right? And so, you know, you 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 want to eat this stuff and then you got to eat more at five o'clock. Yeah. So this is where the nutrition comes in. How can nutrition sleep? We know increase T. How can nutrition increase T? So, I mean, for one thing, actually to, to touch on a quick topic before I forget, something that I've, I mean, seen in the research, felt myself and know from my clients, uh, I've got a few guys who actually have sleep apnea and I've seen a vast difference in their desire for sugary carbs when they yes. do sleep. So our body's like, you know, our body has a memory bank. What foods make me feel peppy, right? Right. And we need that release of dopamine. So some people might notice who are listening that if you've ever gotten a night of diminished sleep. And the next day you're like, I, just, I, feel like I want carbs or something. I want something sweet. That is a physiological thing. It's a biological chemical change. So these are things that where your sleep will affect your nutrition, your desire to eat foods that are not good for you. But when it comes to something like nutrition um, and testosterone, nutrient deficiencies are also something that plays a role. You know, when, when people get older and a lot of my male clients are businessmen, they travel, they're executives, they're on the road, and there's the, the, the pastries and the, and the cookies and crap that are always in the break room. Always. Yeah, and these guys are almost living on that stuff. They come in, they have their croissant in the morning with coffee, loaded mm -hmm. with sugar. Mm -hmm. Then at lunch, oh, let me just grab a quick lunch. I'll go to McDonald's and get a soda, a burger, and fries. All the time. Yeah, and, you know, then they have the diminished sleep because they're up at night doing business deals and making things happen. And so you've got the lack of sleep, the lack of nutrition. And now when they go into work, their cognitive, their mental acuity suffers. 
So they're like right. pounding coffee. And what I try to get them to do is, again, I like to uh, um, implement small changes. Mm -hmm. so I don't want to do a nutritional overhaul on day one. I'll say, all right, you know, John or, 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 or what have you, let's just make a better choice for breakfast today. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was a croissant. Let's put oatmeal in its place with berries and you keep everything else the same. Then right. they start, yeah. And then they start doing that and they're like, oh, this is good. Okay. Now let's look at the protein source. Can we do right. a couple of eggs or, or a protein shake or something like that? Right. And, and get a good source of a, a, a protein shake because back in, in, in my late thirties, as, as I've, you know, you, as I shared with you, I had, I had this cardiac event and I'm here in the hospital. My breakfast was fast food. My lunch was fast food. The dirty water dogs. I mean, I was eating those like crazy. I come out of my office in Perth Amboy. I'm along the uh, Belt Parkway. There was that place right by the Riding Academy, the dirty water dog, one o'clock every Friday, three dogs, can of Coke. And I put a dollar down. I went to the, I went to the front because I was there every Friday. And I just put that dollar down. I even missed one time and, and, and he said, don't worry about it. He goes, I, 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 I sold them. But then you become addicted to this stuff because at three o'clock I had pizza. Wow. At three o'clock I had pizza. And this is what brought me to the point where I was, I had to make, this is exactly for all of us, you know, for all the listeners, this is what Christian is, is, is talking about making positive lifestyle changes, those step-by-step -step analysis for those positive lifestyle changes, you know, eat, eat a healthy breakfast and have some berries. Then let's take a look at the protein source. Let's take a look at lunch. Where can you fit in a nice nutrition shake, a nice protein shake during the day to regulate that insulin and cortisol? Is that, is that, is that correct? Yeah, 100%. And again, I, I try to give people solutions that are simple to apply in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you start talking to people about all this meal prep and you got to change your whole life, they're like, whoa, 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 guy. Like I'm, I got kids. I've got a business to run. I, I can't be doing all that. So I'll say, okay, in your shake, make your smoothie the night before for the next morning. All right. We get you out of the door. It's already done. And right. if I, if I realize they're not eating enough vegetables, take a small, a handful of baby spinach, throw it in that protein shake. Right. You got some greens and you don't even taste it. And they're like, oh, that, that's pretty simple. It just tastes like chocolate, you know? You know what? You and I are living in parallel universes because this is what I discuss. You know, let's take a look at your protein. Let's take a look at your carbs. Let's take a look at your healthy fats. And let's see what we can do to fuel the body for the length of the day. So sleep is important to increase your tea. Nutrition is important to increase your tea. Okay, exercise and longevity. Let's talk about exercise. You're a bodybuilder. Let's talk about exercise. Okay, so one of the reasons why I love exercise, especially for the men over 40, is that for intense bouts of exercise, whether it's resistance training or high intensity interval training, there's always a post exercise testosterone spike, right? And a mm -hmm. release of uh, endorphins. And that spike, if you do it chronically, I mean, if you exercise every day, right. you get to reap the benefits of that. I've never met any person who has done a good workout and after that been like, I'm so mad that I did that. They're always no. like, oh, I feel great. Like, I right. <clears throat> again, you know? Right. So I try to get them to, to almost, you start to crave that because that's your, your, your vigor for the day. You've, right. you've released the endorphins, you've got the workout, you get your feeling of accomplishment, and now you're like, ooh, I want that again, you know? Right. You become addicted to it, right? It's something that you want to do day in and, and, and day out, and especially during COVID, right? Yes. You and I, you know, living in New Jersey and New York, we were on lockdown for a period of time. You can gain weight. Some of my patients gain weight, so it's important. What types of exercises do you recommend for men over 40? So the first thing I say, at least if someone's just getting started, let's say you have someone who's sedentary, I'll right. say, let's do what you will actually do. Right. So if it's like, hey, go to the gym and they're like, I don't have time. Okay, fine. Let's create a routine you can do in your house. You wake up in the morning, give yourself 15 minutes. Let's start with 15 minutes. Right. You can go for a, a long walk or a slow jog. You can do some body weight squats. You can do some push-ups, whatever it might be. Let's just get the ball rolling. Right. And then I tell men, I'm like, listen, we want to do things that help you utilize your full range of motion, right? Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that we lose as we age is mobility. Right. So like squats are great. Granted, your joints feel okay and you can access that range of motion. Right. Um, things like rows, because we all want a strong posterior chain. Um, yes. 
deep core exercises like strategic planks and different things, mm -hmm. things to get your heart rate up. Get a medicine ball. It's a great way to do some ball slams to get frustration out, get your heart rate up. Uh, and it's fun. Mm -hmm. You know, who doesn't like slamming a ball against the ground? You know, you know what? I have my medicine ball in, in, in the, uh, <laughs> it's in my garage. We have, we have several, you know, I, you just get it and you, and you start and you start whacking it, you know, frustration, stress, talk about how stress diminishes T because that's so important. So this is something I would say most of us, most of you guys who are listening have heard at some point that stress is a silent killer. Mm -hmm. now, I know from research studies from just different people who have the clients that I've had, um, that are very, very high stress, meaning they might have a very demanding job and they've got kids. So you get up at five in the morning, the kids are like, I don't want to go to school. So you got to get them ready. Your day has already started off stressful, right? Right. Then you get in the commute, the two hour commute to work. You're already pissed off because you've been in traffic forever. You didn't eat breakfast. And now you got to get, let's say on the trading floor. And then, you know, it's a, it's a jungle. Right. And, and you got a pile of, of papers on your desk. This right. Big. Now you have to eat lunch while you're doing work and you barely choke it down. So all throughout the day, especially nowadays, we're just under stress. And then we have access to, to email all day because we have a phone. So there's right. no turning it off. So it's like, oh, crap, another email. Okay, the boss needs this. What happened with the kids? What happened at school? That So there's just this. this uh, Constant. Pain. Yeah. And stress will cause elevated heart rate, blood pressure. Mm -hmm. It can cause, you know, just the feeling that the world is on your shoulders and that alone can cause anxiety attacks. A heart right. attack, if, if done long enough, now combine that with bad nutrition. Now your body has no way to manage oh, yeah. stress through the nutrients you take in because you're not getting any. So yeah, yeah, it it it's it, you know, stress is just it's just it is that silent killer and it can really and it can really knock you out. And do you recommend any, any type of stress management or, or do you have somebody that you work when, when it comes to that? So I've got several different male clients who have stress from different causes. Some from work, most of them do have work stress. Mm -hmm. Some are from kids, some are from relationships. Mm -hmm. We all know people who have been in, in bad relationships where the spouse and, 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 and they just don't, they don't have the relationship they used to. So they're always on each other's nerves. So some guys do well with mild meditation, guided meditation. Right. I'm like, listen, I'm like, Scott, before you go to work, I want you to take only five minutes, get yourself an app like Headspace, right. guided meditation, and just clear your mind for five minutes. See, how, see how, how you feel in the morning. They're like, wow, they're like that is actually pretty recharging. And it was only five minutes. And right. on a busy man schedule, you can fit that in if you care about it. You know? Right. Especially, especially if you're uh you know, on the train going into Manhattan, you can put the earbuds in. Well, I don't know if you, if you can go on a train right now going into Manhattan with COVID, but it, 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 it does make a big, a big difference. You know, um, I, I do some, you know, I'm going to, you know, as I was sharing, I, I do some work, uh, I'm going to start doing some work with special forces and they meditate, you know, they meditate, they win in the mind before they step out into the field of battle, as they say, and you could do that in your life. It yeah. doesn't have to be a battlefield. So I think that's extremely important, you know, and what else? another intervention that I thought of. So I'm, 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 I'm a huge psychology geek, right? I just, everything about how the mind works and why we do what we do and chemical reactions. I'm just, I'm total nerd on it. So I'll have guys focus on, um, strategies in the moment. So if something happens and let's say it's at work, it could be with the family, it could be with the wife. I'll say, stop for a second, give mm -hmm. yourself 30 seconds and think to yourself, is this situation as bad as I'm making it out in my head? Because mm -hmm. sometimes things happen and people, the heart rate goes up, you know, you get the fight or flight response. And I'm like, okay, is this something that can be put off until later on? Do you have to worry mm -hmm. about it now? They might say yes or no. And right. based on the answer, okay, can you maybe take a minute to write down what you need to do so you don't have to keep it in here? It's on a list. I'll take care of it later. Right. Right. And then when you get to the, um, when you get to whatever the problem is, one, you've had time to cool off because you weren't impulsive and reactive. Right. You have created a strategy. Okay. Can I deal with it later? Yes. And maybe write down a little something about it. Oh, uh, this is what I'm going to do to solve it. 
So right. that the idea is already out of your head. And then when you get to it, take a second and think, okay, if I yell right now, is that going to make the future situation better? It's right. Exactly. I love that. That is, that is a great strategy because you could cool down. It gets your mind to think about some positive changes that you can make, brings down that stress level, and then you can move forward with that. Yeah. Now and let's, I'm sorry, breathing techniques also. I totally forgot. Go ahead. You know what? You know what? I think that's a great topic. Go for it. Yeah. So something that, you know, to get sort of a little bit into the biology again, breathing is a huge determining factor of your ability to deal with stress and so right. many things. And a lot of people as a result of stress, again, I know this with a lot of my guys, become stress breathers. And those are the people that, right? right. When people get angry, picture the Hulk. What does he look like? Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, right. And then everyone these days is like, ah, oh, just my neck is always, I'm, I'm so tight in the traps. So I'll tell people, I've, I've had my guys in the office. I've literally had clients call me when they're at work. They're like, Christian, this thing just happened. Like, what was that? Thing? <laughs> and I'm like, Scott, I'm like, all right, just, I want you to take a second, hang up the phone with me, take 10 long breaths into the nose, fill your belly with air and expel as much air out as you can. Right. And at the, end of the 10, he's like, okay, I feel a little bit better. You know, it might not have fixed it, but in that moment, he's not blood pressure's up, ready to kill someone. It just helps manage the situation better. It does. And you know what, for, for our listeners, um, you know, when you can, when you can master breathing and you can calm down, you can actually make better choices instead of when you're in that moment where you're all over the place, you know, you got the hysteria going on, you got, you know, you have anxiety going on, you know, if you can, if you can bring it down a notch or two, it's important because then you can make better decisions. I use box breathing throughout the day, breathe in for five, hold for five, expel for five, hold again for five. And that seems to work for me. Again, five to 10 minutes can make all the difference in the world. That's that lifestyle that we've been uh, talking about that can help out somebody. So I think that's important to notice also. Definitely. Now, let's talk about diet. I got, I got individuals coming in, who's on keto? Who's on Mediterranean? Who's on paleo? Who's a carnivore? Who's a vegan? They don't want to listen to anything else. They, they're right there. They got the, you know, they got the blinders on, um, you know, and, you know, every diet has its, uh, you know, benefits, but let's talk about diet and, and low T. So there's so much to be said about diet. And just like you said, nowadays, it's almost as if people are on teams when it comes to diet. Like, Yes. I'm team keto, I'm team paleo, I'm a vegan, and you can't say anything to me. Right. And I think that being dogmatic or, or just being callous in the way that you think about nutrition doesn't help because at, at one point in your life, a certain diet right. might be great for you, then things change. Maybe you decide, hey, I want to run an Ironman. So maybe a keto diet's not the best for you. Or, hey, I right. want to be a sprinter. Hey, I want to be a, I want to do a powerlifting competition. You have to be able to be flexible, just like with exercise. Right. It's like, okay, I want to get as strong as possible. You're going to train a certain way. Okay. I want to get as big as possible. You're going to train a certain way. I want to run a marathon and people change their goals as life goes on. Yes. So you have to change your nutrition. The other thing is I tell people when you're starting off, the best diet for you is the one you will actually follow. Right. If you're just going to pick something and say, I'm just going to dig my heels in and do this because I read that book and that guy's right. Or, and I'm sure you've come across this. When the documentaries come out like Forks Over Knives or Game Changers or everyone's <clears throat> like, oh my God, meat is terrible. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Did you know that some of these documentaries are funded by vegan organizations or right. the, studies, the studies were not checked out by other um, reputable sources? <clears throat> and it's like, absolutely. It's like, sure, it's great to get the information. Knowledge is power. But then ask yourself, okay, do I know this is true? And if you're not totally sure, spend some time asking other professionals, what do you think right. about this diet? Do you think it's right for me in my lifestyle? You know, I think that's important to say because a lot of, indiv you know, a lot of individuals and perhaps our, you know, our listeners today, they may in fact be looking at it and saying, well, you know what? I am on a particular diet and, and I did see a TV show. I did see a documentary. I did read a book. It may, it may or may not be the best. You don't know. That's why you come and see Christian or I, because we can help you and we can guide you 
along. You know, I have so many patients coming in, you know, Christian, and they're on a particular diet and they don't want to change, you know, and it's very difficult. And I'm saying, well, you're not feeling well, you know, you're eating a particular diet. You read this book. You have to critically analyze. It's like when I teach the students in evidence-based nutrition over at Bridgeport, you know, you got to look at the study and you got to say, is this study even valid, right? You got to read the book and you got to say, does this make sense? You know, oh, you know, I lost 50 pounds in, um, you know, in a month because I went on this particular diet may not be the best, may not be the best for your tea. In addition to could be actually detrimental to yourself. I had a patient that is with me for three weeks, lost about 12 pounds, which is really a lot because two and a half pounds, two pounds is healthy weight loss. You know, you don't want to go, you know, that quick. And she was actually upset. It goes back to what you were saying before. You see it in the media, you know, the slim fast and all of that. Oh, if you drink this shake, it's going to lose that 50 pounds in a month. That's not healthy. Am I, am I correct in saying that? 100%. And the other thing is sustainability. That's a huge aspect. And again, we're all, right. we're all fed these advertisements of lose you know, lose everything overnight. And I asked people, I'm like, did you gain that weight overnight? No. How long did it no. take? Well, probably about five years. Right. Okay, I'm not saying it's going to take five years to lose it, but don't expect to lose it by next week. Right. right. And the other thing is when you're on a nutrition plan, you, you have to look at it as a lifestyle change. It's not now I get it. If someone's going to step on stage as a bodybuilder, sure. It's a short-term goal. You're not going right. to sit down lean forever. 12 weeks, 16 weeks, you're done. But if you're right. talking about, I want to be healthy for the rest of my life, can you see yourself doing this for six, eight, 12 months down the road? And does it allow you to live the life you want? And, and this is something that I was actually writing about today, is that when, when you consider a nutrition plan, let's say someone who's generally healthy and just trying to make changes to lose weight, <sighs> feel better, maybe support the recovery of exercise, is going out to eat once a week with your spouse a special thing for you? Is that important to you? Does this plan totally not allow you to do that? And does that create stress? Right. Because if you're on a sound nutrition plan, you should be able to eat out once a week. Maybe you go out with the family, you guys just, and you have a reasonable meal. You don't, you don't try to be an eating competitor, you know? Right. Yeah. You're, 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 you're not going out and you're going to eat, uh, you know, 50 hot dogs, you know, like, like the 4th of July or something like that. What do you like and what can they do to make it healthy so that you can enjoy it? Because, Part of a diet and part of your nutrition is sitting around and enjoying it with, you know, family and friends, right? And maybe you have a nice meal, you're, you know, you're with your family, you're with your friends, and you're having a nice time. There's a lot of conversation that's going on. That's also important when it comes to diet and nutrition, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and another aspect when we get into testosterone for men is if the diet is very limited in the variety of foods you can eat, that can cause nutrient deficiencies. And I'll just use uh, veganism as an example, just because it's an easy one to, to, to mention. Right. So oftentimes you might have a vegan who might be low in iron or who might be low in B12. Right. And they're not having red meat. They're not having, you know, the foods that will provide these nutrients. And sometimes they're very deficient in protein because right. they're eating vegetables, but they're not complete protein because they don't eat the right combinations. Right. So, you know, when you talk about a man over 40, protein is very important to fight sarcopenia. I mean, you naturally have a decline in testosterone about one right. percent a year after 30, you know, in, in many cases. And then if you have a diet that is void of things like zinc, which is extremely important for testosterone. Yes. B12 and iron, you're going to have a man who's potentially stressed. They are losing muscle. That means metabolic function goes down. <laughs> right. Ability to burn fat goes down. Ability to build muscle goes down. You get weaker. And how's that going to make you feel about yourself when you go to do things? I go right. to try to lift that thing. I can't do it. I'm less of a man now, you know? And, and there's so right. many things that, that come into play just from having sound nutrition. Right. So let's talk about supplements. Some people like to supplement with supplements and some, and some don't. It, it, there's always that, you know, give and take. What are some good supplements for our listeners listening that would help increase your tea? You so, mentioned zinc, you mentioned iron, anything else? Uh, zinc, iron, um, I mean, zinc, just because it's so important for testosterone production, right. iron, just because it's important for your blood. And then one that I'm finding is more and more important is CoQ10. Now, it's not necessarily directly 
for testosterone, but as we age, our body does not produce um, um, as well, and we need to support it. Another right. thing is statins. I know this is a totally different topic. No, go right ahead. So I've had, uh, I've got one man right now, and he is 47. And mm -hmm. he's on, he used to be on Lipitor, and now he's on a different one. And what happened, it was interesting. So I happened to personal, tr personal train this nutrition client, and he was pulling his calves and hamstrings every, almost oh, every. Oh, right. 100%. He would be doing a hamstring curl or a Romanian deadlift. And he's like, oh, I just mm -hmm. pulled my hamstring. So, you know, got on the computer, started looking up some studies. And I see that um, statins cause the decrease in um, CoQ10. And I Yes, they do. What's that? Yes, they do. Yeah. And I didn't know that at first. And I'm like, oh, my God, this must be why. So I'm like, okay, here's what I found. Here's the studies you know, let's, let's try this. I'm like, ah, I want you to add some CoQ10 to your diet. Talk right. to your doctor also, see if you can get this statin switched because some of them, some of the doctors actually knew his doctor knew yes. didn't say anything to him. And now he's got a little mass of tissue that has been uh, uh, built up around his tendons, his Achilles tendon. So now he'll always have soreness there, but that's a whole nother story. But so he started supplementing with the CoQ10, hasn't pulled his muscle since. Yeah, CoQ10 is very important, especially when you age. I mean, when I get my vitamin and mineral panel done, I'm, I'm at that cusp where I'm deficient, you know, having normal levels. And I do supplement with CoQ10 from here on, you know, from, you know, from time to time. And for the students at UB, I'm going to give you one question on your comp final. I promise you it's going to be there because I put it in. Statins, what's the enzyme? That, that, is, that is prohibited when you're taking a statin that stops the uh, production of CoQ10. So you have that, that's, you know, there's no reason why you should get that wrong. So that's on there 100%. Now, let's talk about gut health because you know what? Everybody's talking about gut health today. A friend of mine is at an Ivy League school. He's, he's, he's studying leaky gut. He's got a PhD. There's pictures he has. Gut health is extremely important, right, Christian? Yes. Oh, and actually, before, before I forget, just to dial back to the supplements real quick, vitamin D. So yes. the reason oh, why, yes. okay, so vitamin D is actually a hormone, right? Yes. And it's, it's shown in research that about 70% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D. One, and especially now during the quarantine, we're always inside. We don't get enough, right? Sleep, right? And- Vitamin D is directly linked to testosterone production. So yes, it is. A lot of men who are deficient in vitamin D, plus they've got the stress, plus the nutrition's bad, and, and the list goes on. So I highly recommend a high quality vitamin D supplement. Now, in my experience, I tend to favor the ones where the vitamin is, is encapsulated in some sort of oil, whether MCT or olive oil, because it yes. makes the integrity of the vitamin. Yes, and, 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 it, gets, and it gets absorbed more. And that, and that makes it, that makes it a lot better because vitamin D, you know, for all of our listeners, it is extremely important brain health, bone health, muscle health, you know, cold and flu testosterone, you know, so much research that, that goes on with vitamin D. So I love, I love that we mentioned vitamin D very important to take that supplement. Let's get into the gut health because it is so important today, Christian, Tell me about gut health. So I've got to say in the last two years, I have delved so much into gut health because prior gut health is becoming very, very pop, a very popular topic in, uh, in the media. People are yep. learning more about it and gut and brain are directly linked by the vagal nerve, right? Yep. So there's so many people that eat foods that are not good for them. And we'll just say processed foods, um, you know, artificial sweeteners and, and, um, uh, foods that are loaded with antibiotics and hormones and all these different things, processed carbohydrates that cause inf inflammation in the gut. Now, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. mentioned that um, things like um, IBS, colitis, and, and leaky gut is becoming so popular because people are eating foods that are not good for them. And then they're taking things to try to cover up the symptoms like, hey, if this food's not good for you, just take this pill and it allows you to eat that heartburn ridden uh, uh, food, or if you have bloating or gas, just take Beano and you'll be fine. 
Right. This is where I tell people, tell my guys, biofeedback. Now, this is a term that I learned from a guy named Sam Miller. Mm -hmm. And I'm such, such a proponent of biofeedback. And what that basically means is your body speaks to you. If you have a stomach ache after eating food, you shouldn't ignore it. And don't try to take a Band-Aid and put it on top. Right. What did you eat that made you feel bad? And let's figure out why or stay away from it. 100%. That is, that is, that is extremely, that is, uh, that is extremely important. And, and, and the gut health with, with what Christian is saying, you can eat a lot of processed foods, standard American diet, it's called SAD, you know, and processed foods, you know, a study that was done, um, Mayo Clinic proceedings, I think it was in November of 2019, Christian, um, where those individuals in Spain getting away from Mediterranean diet and they're eating a lot of processed foods, readily available, okay, highly affordable, okay, and palatable. They make it so palatable with the sugars and, and all of that so that you become addicted to this stuff, you know, and you're eating processed meats and processed foods creates a big inflammatory reaction in, in your stomach and now your gut and your gut is part of your immune system right now. They're finding out that a, most of the immune system is within your gut. So if you got this inflammatory, um, you know, reaction that's going on, it is not healthy whatsoever. So make sure you get, you know, Christian and I taking a look at your gut. Anything else about gut health, Christian? Yeah. So actually what's interesting is I've got a client now and he's, he's, a, he's my youngest guy currently. He's 27. Now, I actually have him going in for a colonoscopy this coming uh, on, on November 7th because when he came to me, he was reporting that. Now, this is a guy who's, if you looked at him on the street, you'd say, oh, he's in great shape. He's got vigor. He's a 27-year-old that's built like a moose. You know what I mean? He's mm -hmm. a great guy. But mm -hmm. what was interesting is that he had nutrition where he got – he was in a bad mental space about burning fat and what type of foods he should or shouldn't eat to do that. So he was excessively low calorie, very high stress due to his job and anxiety that he has. Right. And in, in, when he started working with me, he was reporting dark colored stool, mm -hmm. inflammation in the left and right sides of his torso, mm -hmm. lethargy, you know, all the symptoms that tells me, I'm like, okay, maybe he's got IBS, Crohn's, leaky gut, something like that. Right. And I'm like, look, I at least want you to go in for a colonoscopy. Let's just see what's going on. Right. And, you know, this is a guy who's young and people think, now this guy grew up in an Italian household, a lot of breads, a lot of pasta, a lot of, you know, right. fraud maps that some people are not good with. Right. It depends on the individual, but, you know, he would, on Sundays, my God, this kid would cheat the foods he would eat. It would just be pasta and pizza and burgers all day. Sunday is made for macaroni in the Italian American household because I would go get two or three loaves of Italian bread, Christian. And I, I, we got that many because the, a loaf was almost gone within the two blocks that I had to walk home. And then I would get the meatballs and put it on the Italian bread and little Parmesan cheese. So it was, I'm salivating just thinking okay. about it. <laughs> and actually, so oddly enough, my mom's Italian, my dad's Jamaican. So I mainly grew up in an Italian kitchen. So we had the the bread with the dipping in the olive oil. And, and oh. my mom calls it gravy because my grandmother was from Bari, Southern Italy. Right. It's gravy. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, um, you know, and, and, and some of these foods that I'd eat, even as a kid, I would get bloated and I didn't understand why. It wasn't until later on I started to understand more about carbs and, and different aspects of, of, um, of, you know, gut inflammation. But, you know, when it comes to testosterone, Gut inflammation influences your brain through the vagal nerve, mm -hmm. how you feel, but it also impairs the production of testosterone because when you have inflammation, that's an adverse effect and your body is essentially sick. Right. It, it, it takes resources in order to try to correct that. And if you're feeling bloated, you're not feeling great. So that's just going to affect your daily disposition anyway. But oh, 100, 100%. Yeah. Sometimes I miss those days with the macaroni. However, I don't like feeling what happens a couple hours after that. You're lying on the couch, you're passed out, you can't, and you can't get up. You know exactly what I'm talking yeah, I'm about. Pants to, to, to get to oh yeah, there's no doubt. You're watching the football game on a Sunday. It's it's like it's all good. You wake up at eight o'clock and then you have a potato and egg sandwich and you get oh, some yeah. more carbs. <laughs> and after my own heart. There you go. <laughs> so now 
we talked, we, we spoke about uh, supplements. Let's talk about protein powder because everybody's coming into my office and they're on these different types of protein powders. They're getting them from neighbors or getting from here. And, you know, and, and I like to take them off of these protein powders and put them on a better one. So let's talk about protein powders and tea. So one thing that's completely true is that again, to go along like with the uh, testosterone boosters over the counter, everyone looks at protein powder as this magic thing. And I tell right. clients, I'm like, listen, it's just another form of protein. It's not needed. Like if you want to build muscle, you can eat chicken and, and potatoes and you get the same effect, right? Right. But when it comes to protein powders, like you said, I tell my clients to look for, like there's a company that I love called True Nutrition. Mm -hmm. And I have no affiliation with them. I just like them. They're third party tested. And I tell clients, I'm like, listen, if you don't buy the protein powder on the back shelf at CVS for $3, because chances are it could be, uh, um, there could be fillers in it and a whole bunch of crap that you don't know. Right. Heavy and, metals. Heavy metals is another yeah. huge. And now, now, and now you talk about toxicity when it comes, when it comes to the protein powders that you're uh, taking. Exactly. And I tell them, I'm like, listen, one of the things that I was taught years ago is that if you don't pay for quality food now, you'll pay it in health bills later, right? Medical bills, pardon me, not health bills. And it does, you know, even though a protein powder might be a little bit more expensive, you're paying for the quality. It's like, if you buy a good quality car, you're paying for quality. It's going to last. 100%. And the other thing is it shouldn't be a crutch. Like it's not like your protein powder all day. You know, it might be one of your daily meals, totally fine. Maybe you're, you're on a tight schedule. You got to get a quick meal in, or it's just something you love to enjoy, but you don't want it to be the secret to your fat loss. Like I'm right. just in protein powder all day. Kids in high school do this all the time. That is the wrong thing to do. It may be part of a healthy nutritional plan where if you have one or two shakes a day at the appropriate time, at that three o'clock area, you know, maybe if you can get that in, you have, you have breakfast at seven, six 30, maybe about 10, 10 30, maybe you, you, you can get your first shake in maybe again around three, that two to three bewitching hours, but it's not a meal replacement. Is that correct? 100%. And yeah. you know, the reason why is for one, there is no replacement for whole food. And the reason I say this is that there's enzymes and cofactors and fiber and all these things that are contained in vegetables. When it comes to protein, you've got nutrients and right. their food works synergistically. It, it's just like bioavailability of food, meaning for the listeners, the amount of food your body can absorb, it often goes up when you eat food in synergy, like carbs and protein and fat together. They all work right. together. With protein, if you just have the extracted protein, you're leaving so many nutrients on the table Yes. And you can end up with deficiencies if, you, if protein powder is your only source of protein. So many, so many people come in and they're, and, they're, and they're having the protein powder and they got the protein bars going on and they think that they're healthy and they'll take some vitamins and minerals. They think that's healthy and that's the most unhealthy situation that you can come in with. You know, you may gain weight, you may be really, you know, skinny, your body count may be off, you may have a, you know, large percent, you know, percent body fat. And, you know, you know, listeners, you know, be careful when it comes to the, to that, to that, to that protein powder. Let's go to fat loss. Just yeah. mentioned percent, you know, you know, body fat and, um, you know, there's always obstacles. You got to be consistent. Some people have their expectations that are just way off, right? When it, when it comes to this, oh, I'm, I'm coming to see you. I remember having one, one uh, patient they were in a biggest uh, loser contest and it was a woman in her fifties. And so she wanted to lose percent body fat because that was the biggest losers contest. And um, it was overall total weight loss in addition to, but then she's gaining weight because she's working out heavy and she's eating all of the protein. She's drinking the shakes. So you have to have reasonable, I said to her, you're just not going to lose weight at this point when you're doing that. So let's talk about fat loss. So fat loss has been turned into a marketing just crap storm, I'll call it. Oh yeah, no doubt. You can say it. Yes, it is. It's just because there's so many companies who want to make a dollar off you or it's several hundred. Oh they're yeah. They're telling you that their supplement is going to get you this. 
there is so many pop-ups and pay-per-click ads that are like, here's the one food that's going to, again, if it sounds too good to be true, it definitely is. Get rid of it. And, you know, ex- like Dr. Dan, you, you talked about expectations I think are huge. Right. And because everything now is instant gratification. You order from Amazon, you get it in two days. You, you know, right. we see people on social media and they seem like they're in shape all year long, but yet they took, they took the photo shoot while they were in shape and they got pictures for the whole year, right? How do they achieve this so fast? And it's, when it comes to fat loss, you want it to happen at a reasonable rate that's sustainable. And then once you get to your goal, you want to maintain, and you should only have to make small changes to do that. I agree. Making those small changes are extremely important, and you don't have to go crazy doing that. Very important. I'm looking at the time. We're almost up on our hour. This has gone really quick, by the way. Right. It's, it's almost up to, on, on the hour. I want to talk about one more topic. Okay. we got about eight minutes left. Talk about how do you set goals for your uh, clients? Because goals are very important. Yes. Okay. So the acronym I love is SMART, SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. So Mm -hmm. the first thing is you want to determine what you want to do. Is it build muscle? Is it burn fat? If so, how much? So the other thing is speaking in the first person you say, or I recommend writing down, I will lose uh, 30 pounds by this date. So you want it to be, you want to have a by when. Right. Right. So you're not like sort of wandering around in the ether. Oh, I'll eventually get the five pounds off. It's like by November 30th, I will have five pounds off. Um, Measurable. It's got to be something that you can quantify. So is it pounds? Is it inches? Is it, you know, what is the way that you're going to know for sure, tangibly that you're making progress? Um, Attainable. It's got to be something that's within your means, meaning you know, if right. you're, if you've been sedentary for for 10 years and you're like, right. I'm going to run an Ironman race tomorrow. It's like, not going to happen. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're going to fly out of your body. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you want to say, okay, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to go for a, a 30 minute run. The right. next day I'll go for, you know, so you want it to be steps that you can build on right. so that you, you create the adaptation so that you're prepared for the intense work down the road. And that, it's something that you're not going to automatically feel like a failure when you didn't do a 10 mile run today after being on the couch yesterday. Right. It, it, and I think that's important for our, for our listeners to, to understand. I mean, you know, it, you, you had said this before, you know, when you're starting out, maybe you just walk out of the house for 10 to 15 minutes and then walk back. You got to start somewhere. You're not going to run a marathon. You're not going to look like Christian after one you know, session, you know, and, oh, I, I, I did, I did back and, and chest that day. And how come I'm not, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Listeners, that's for sure. Yeah. And it's, you know, again, time bound. I think it's really, really important to set an end date. It's like, if your boss right. be a project, he's not like, Hey, get it done in the next five years. No, no, no. I need no. it done by <laughs> Friday. I need that RFT report done by Friday. Right. Cover, you know, like, so when you create a sense of urgency, you, you give yourself fuel under the fire, the other, or fuel under your butt. The other thing is that I'm, I'm very, very strong on figuring out a reason why. So right. I think people sometimes are like, hey, I would love to lose five pounds. And that sounds great. But what's your real emotional deep reason? Is right. it you want to get healthier because you want to see your daughter walk down the aisle and the 100%. doctor told you you're going to have a heart attack? That will make you change versus, yeah, I'd like to lose five pounds because my jeans are a little tight. Right. You know what? And I have that. I have my why as my son. You know, my wife and I, we have our why as our son. We're, 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 we're both 58 years old. We have a 12 year old. We want to see him high school, college, and, and we want to see how his life develops. You know, that's, you know, very exciting. So you have to have a strong why. OK, we're almost up on our hour and, and we're going to have you back on, Christian, because there's so much more to discuss. I think we're just scratching the surface here and you're like, yes, you know, there's no doubt. So. How can my listeners contact you? How can the men that are over 40 contact you? So you can go to my website, relentlessfitnessandnutrition.com. If you have any questions, you can go to the contact section. We can set up a complimentary call for you and we can talk about your goals, any issues that you have. Um, and if you'd like, create, a, of course, a plan for you to succeed. Um, I can also be found on social media. If you're on Instagram, I'm Christian F. Palmer. And on Facebook, I'm Christian Palmer dash relentless fitness and nutrition. Um, 
And, you know, I recommend definitely the, the best way to get in touch is going to my website, relentlessfitnessandnutrition.com. And if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to ask me any questions. I'd be more than happy to answer. And I recommend Christian for all of, for, for all of the listeners that we've had over the last year, I recommend Christian because you can see the passion, you can see the knowledge, the skill, the education, the training, the experience that he has, and he lives it. You can see how he lives it. And so I recommend Christian, please, even if you ask a couple of questions, right, Christian, just go in, ask him questions, because if he can help you out, go for it. So Christian, I want to thank you for coming one, on. One more thing. Ahead. Thank you so much, Dr. Dan, for having me on. And for the listeners, like we need more practitioners like Dr. Dan in the industry because there's Thank so you. many people who are just looking at, at their patients as numbers. I got to get more right. foot traffic. Someone like Dr. Dan takes the time to figure out who you are and your lifestyle as an individual, preach the right information. How do we make you healthy for the rest of your life? And how do we make that life long versus, oh, well, let's just get you in, give you a pill and send you out the door. Right. You know what? Thank you very much for that, Christian, because you and I, we both do that in our, in our, in our, in our, in our daily lives, in our, in our work lives every day. And it's very important to do that. I want to thank everybody for listening. Christian Palmer, give him a holler and wait for the next one when he's on. We're going to ask him to come on in a couple of months because there's so much more to talk about. Christian, thank you very much for coming on. It's been great. Thank you so much for having me. Go to YouTube, subscribe, Suburban Wellness Group, which is underneath the podcast, Suburban Wellness Group. I want to thank everybody for uh, listening today. We always have the best. Christian's the best. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Take care. Take care, guys.